remains a ruin. Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but never, never you have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages, only to put them in a purse of holes in them. This is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into your mountains and bring down lumber and build a house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expect much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? Because, declares the Lord Almighty, because of my house, which remains in ruin, while each of you is busy with his own house. Before I carry on to this Bible verse, I'd like to refresh up on a topic that I uh, talked on before. If you guys remember, uh, I talked on a topic called Sarah. Well, remember in that, in that story, I said, um, Osiris, the king of Persia at the time, he allowed the Jews to like to build their temple. He allowed them. He, he said he pretty, he pretty much said that the God of Israel was a true God, and and Israel could go and build their temple, the temple of God. And then we come to this. This is like carrying on from that plan. But did you guys know that this is 18 years old, bro? Like when Osiris gave him the plan and the idea to start building the temple. I thought in my head, like, well, wouldn't you start straight away? And then 18 years down the road, somewhere in the middle of it, they lost their eagerness, their keenness to follow through with the plan. And then I asked, I was asking him to give me a verse, please. And then he gave me this verse, and I was like, I've not seen the word that Jesus has an ego or keenness in this verse. And then he reminded me. He reminded me about that story. Of like he gave him the plan, and then somehow they lost their buzz to carry on building the house. Well, you guys feel like that sometimes? Like we go to a conference or like the camp that we just went to, 
We go then with, I believe. And then our praises are like, woo! And then three weeks down the road, it becomes from that to like, woo! And then a couple of three more weeks after that, it's like, woo! You kind of know what I mean? It's like, like, and I, I find myself to be like that. Like we went to the camp, I was like, oh, all enthusiastic, yes, and the praise of God. But then like, now we're kind of a couple of months away from it. I'm like, oh, oh. It sounds more like a devil than anyhow. And he, he, he brought me to that. And then I asked him, I was like, what happened to them? Like, what happened to the Israelites? Like, how, how did they lose their bite? And then God just goes, they met life. They met life. Like when they came out of their camp, or their, when they came out of their camp, when they came out of their camp, the reality hit them. You know, it was time to go back to work now. It was time to, you know, go back to your routine, like work, church, work, I'm going to church, work, I'm going to church, work, I'm going to church. And then amidst all of that, we started to drop off a few things. Like, we started waking up a bit too late for work, so we didn't read our Bibles in the morning, kind of left that stuff. Like I said, so, uh, pray before you slept that night, you just went to sleep without saying anything at all. But like, we started dropping off like our playing times and periods. Like they meant life. What I'm trying to get at is, like, they were occupied in doing all this stuff, but they neglected to build the house of God. This was their source of enthusiasm. And they forgot. And God was, 
God was pretty angry. He was like, for people that have limited time on earth, you guys take your time. 18 years? Really? It nearly reached two decades before you picked up a hammer and a nail to start building my house. Like it's not until we feel like we're in trouble that you start picking up that hammer, isn't it? But you can't do that. Like when you start picking up to start building, like God can't come down and just straight away stay there. There's no roof. It's not for all my time for God, you know? Like he wants to come and stay in there. He wants to be there all the time. He wants to be there with you guys. But you've got to remember to start building that relationship. To start building that building up. So he has enough for armor in your heart. But most of the time, life comes along. And then we fill life and we fill ourselves with troubles. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. But then the relationship, the foundation and the, and the building that you should have built is just left there in ruins. Amen. Or maybe your situation is a little bit different. You could be just sitting there in your life. You thought, I've been building hard, you know? The last couple of years, I've been doing that. I've been building my relationship with God. I wake, I wake up in the mornings, I say my knuckles. On Fridays, I have my old values, and I've been doing that. For some reason, it just feels like I'm just on a flat plane. You know, there's no elevation. I feel like there's no fresh anointing. Keep building, guys. Every nail counts. And sometimes that's the boring part. It's the small stuff. But it all counts. It all goes to the building of the building. You know, you can't discard the nails. Even though they're so small, but together they hold the building. You kind of get where I'm going. If you feel like you're just going standing in this, like, you know, this is boring, it's day in, day out, I'm just hitting the ropes, going to worship, and I don't feel anything, like, keep at it. Don't give up yet. Keep building. Amen? Just don't let it take 18 years before you start building, okay? Okay, so too. <laughs> okay. Because I waited 30 years until I started doing this. <laughs> Israel, I talk about 18, you're only 33. Uh, I've been trying to do this for ages. So, you know, I'm not sure. None of these guys are 33, so. Uh, all jokes aside. All jokes aside, I just want to uh, read, uh, read this part of here just to um, conclude my little, my little message. And it goes on. Um, Haggai's words similarly rang clear in the time of confusion. But the Jews had come back from their exile in Babylon nearly 20 years earlier. Uh, but they seem to have forgotten the point of return. After one, one false start on the temple, the returned exiles had devoted their energy to building their own houses. The guys went to, and they concentrated on building their own houses. If anything, that is one of the worst things they could do. Is, I'm not saying like a physical house, getting a physical house is awesome, but I, I'm saying like, when you just go to your own comfort, when you're in trouble and you just turn to yourself as your comforter, like, right? then you leave God alone. Like, right? we need to run to his house, not to run to your house when you're in trouble. I'll carry on. Haggai urged their pioneers to give careful thought to their situation. He did not rage like Jeremiah or construct eloquent poems like Isaiah. He put it simply and logically. They had worked hard, but they had earned it. they had earned nothing. Their crops were unsuccessful. The money disappeared as soon as they earned it. Why? Because they had mistaken their priorities. They had mistaken their priorities. So if you ever feel guys like that your, your enthusiasm has been zapped, go back and build that relationship. That's all you need to do. Go back and build that relationship. Go back to love with your follow follow. Or we're back to like, you know, waking up at night and like having a lot before you go to sleep. You know, go back to your own place. Go back to building that relationship with God. Amen. 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 Amen.
And I didn't really like that because I was focusing on something else. And I had I'm important to get involved in God's work. But that kind of thing, Mara, I like to say, I have to for that. And that's the change. Come out, I'm going to redeem my God. Oh, my God, I'm going to redeem my God. But to get involved in God's work. Because he had for Italia, he hung on a Maria to our last year more week. But it took Mahuna EI. But who I am of my own. Father,